हेलो डॉक्टर्स आर यू प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर गवर्नमेंट मेडिकल जॉब और मे बी यू आर ऑलरेडी इनटू गवर्नमेंट एज अ मेडिकल ऑफिसर सो दिस वीडियो इज फॉर यू टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हाउ यू कैन सर्वाइव एज अ मेडिकल ऑफिसर इन गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर इन इंडिया सो इफ यू आर न्यू जॉइनिंग और इफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर इट दिस वीडियो इज फॉर यू हाई माई नेम इज डॉक्टर नितिन एंड इफ यू आर विजिटिंग दिस चैनल फॉर फर्स्ट टाइम Please subscribe to this channel where I share various tips, tutorial ideas, strategies related to growing your career in healthcare industry. So today we are going to talk about the government medical jobs or a medical officer in a government sector. So uh, let me know whether you have already joined the government job or you are preparing for it. let me know your current status in the comment section and what are the kind of challenges that you are facing in your current job i'll try to cover most of the points today but still if i miss out anything maybe in future topics i will definitely cover those uh, areas so today we are going to talk about some of the strategies to survive and thrive as a medical officer in the government job in india so the very first step is you need to understand the government policies you need to familiarize yourself with the government healthcare policies protocols and the procedures it will ensure that you will operate uh, the business or your duties and you will be compliant in a uh, very uh, compliant manner so that is the first step you need to be aware about this uh, policies and protocols because government works on that then you need to be very good at and very strong how you should have strong documentation as a doctor we need to definitely keep all the records and documentation but especially if you are in government medical job you need to be more vigilant about this documentation part because you will be handling many more responsibilities apart from the clinical re responsibilities you will be working on administrative tasks also so you need to be very accurate with medical records any reports any paperwork uh, in order to avoid any administrative issues so uh, it was like long time back when i was maybe 10 10 15 years back when i was in government sector as a medical officer uh, i think it was just uh, beginning of my career and i happened to be work in a on a special project in the government sector so which was catering to the patients across maharashtra okay so from that perspective it was a very big responsibility to address all the patients across maharashtra the patients used to visit at my center at my ward at my department and the challenge was it was uh, a kind of variety of patients were visiting so it was clinically very challenging i enjoyed it but yes that kind of challenge you can face uh, so the point here i wanted to share is that uh, while i was managing this i was also in charge of the special pharmacy special medicines for this particular department so i was in charge of about 1.25 to 1.5 crore uh, medicine inventory so at that point of time it was a really huge uh, inventory in terms of the amount uh, it was not huge by the size it was huge by the pricing of the medicine it was very expensive medicine so i was in charge of that so it was very critical for me to make sure that because i you already know that government sector is so much corrupt and you need to be very vigilant at point at, at all points of time so for me it was even more critical because i was handling this i was new i was handling clinical responsibilities i was handling this pharmaceutical inventory so it was really difficult and very stressful position for me because 
there was if there was some discrepancy in my documentation my career was going to end and i don't want it to happen that so what happens usually in government sector even if you are not corrupt and the 10 people around you are corrupt you will be seen by the same filter of corruption so you need to be very cautious very careful in this kind of environment uh, particularly in government sector it is already infamous for this kind of corruptions and malpractices financial malpractices so i was very fearful but i was cautious also i took almost care in my all documentation the medicines that i received the medicines that i gave to the patient i was documenting every small little thing though it was putting a huge burden on me but considering the impact of any discrepancy it was worth giving time for all that documentation what patient came in how much medicine i gave all that documentation maintaining the inventory safety the physical safety of the uh, medicines how much is into this particular locker how much in this cabinet all those things i used to record at the beginning of the day at the end of the day right uh, so the the principle i would say is when you are government do not trust anybody though he is your friend or a very you might be feeling that he is a very good person jolly person yes be friend with other people but do not trust anybody when it comes to this kind of documentation always do the documentation regarding the clinical aspects the administrative aspects the financial aspects everything you need to document clearly and cautiously so that tomorrow you are not into the trouble not because you do not uh, want to take that responsibility but you want to be make sure that you are safe so that is the thing that the first thing the first principle that you need to follow uh, i hope this example was uh, helpful for you let me know how how you have manage your initial jobs or how you have uh, managing currently if you are into already into government job how you are doing that documentation if you have any tips please let me know in the comment section so that other fields also learn and they can use in their uh, government job the second factor is developing a time management skills you need to balance clinical duties with administrative response uh, responsibilities in a more efficient way in a more efficient manner with patient care and the paperwork as i was giving example of this kind of responsibility in my job so we considering all these things and the kind of patient load it was almost 24 by 7 job i had to be on my toes so that i am ready for the patient okay so i used to get patient in the day time morning evening afternoon night midnight and believe me it was a lot hell of juggling uh, i i when i look back and i also feel wow man how did you do that i am like i am able to believe myself how i used to work in that job so the point here i want to emphasize is that you need to be very cautious very careful in managing your time so when you go to government you need to follow the instructions by the supervisor so i had to manage uh, some medical duties also apart from my special ward okay so apart from that i used to handle some opds for other departments as a replacement if some senior doctor is not coming so you can understand the amount of uh, burden that it was putting me but as i was new into the system i was kind of the junior most person in the department in the whole uh, that civil hospital so it was uh, uh, like i, I need, did not had any choice in, like following the instructions so i was following the instructions but i was careful and cautious at the same time so even if some responsibilities come please document that 
you are doing under whose instructions or under whose order okay then if you want to survive in the government job you need to have good relationship you need to build the relationship with colleagues with senior supervisor you need to establish a positive working relationship with healthcare professionals and the administrative staff for a better teamwork and the support yes they will trouble you but at the same time you need to work with those people only so you need to be more friendly and cooperative with them so you need to build those kind of relationship you need to be at the same time apart from this you need to be more patient centric so that you are focus on the quality care to those patients despite of this bureaucratic hurdles or any resource cons- constraint the supervisor will ask uh, to work at limited resources you, you might not get su- sufficient uh, pharmacy at the required point of time in required uh, specifications in required amounts uh, you might have to be dependent on like you have to wait for some medicines some stationaries right so you need to be more resources resourceful and find the ways how you can arrange and manage those resources in a fruitful way so that you are not into the trouble from the administrative side and from the patient side also so uh, that is a skill that you need to keep in mind and you need to develop that skill okay then you need to adopt to the resource constraint and limitations so when you are working government sector always be prepared to work with limited resources and infrastructure you need to be very creative in the way how you deliver effective care uh, so i remember uh, during my internship it was a very remote uh, location so there we we were short of even uh, what you call those sutures so we had to use threads we had to sterilize them and then use those threads so you need to work you should you should be able to work in those critical situations also i don't know the recent situation but it was way back 20 25 years so uh, those will be the scenarios where you need to work you need to maintain professional ethics you need to uphold high ethical standards in your practice avoiding any kind of involvement in corruption or any kind of malpractice as i mentioned you will be surrounded by those uh, people who might be corrupt so you need to safeguard yourself also if you are truly passionate about working in government sector to serve the people then this is a good opportunity for you but you need to protect yourself one of the critical reason is uh, i i was uh, not very interested in government sector was because there was it was not challenging from the clinical aspect uh, from the knowledge growth aspect so you need to always stay updated on any kind of medical advancements uh you need to continue your medical education you need to be stay updated on the latest healthcare trends and any kind of technologies because when you are in government sector you will not have exposure to this kind of things even if if you see the top most medical college they will have some resource constraint they will not have proper educational programs from the outside it looks very fancy and uh, very lucrative but from inside it's kind of rotten right they do not give you sufficient opportunities you need to embrace flexibility and be adaptable to any changes in your roles in your location or in your job responsibilities and which is a common scenario in government jobs while doing this obviously stress is a by product of this kind of uh, jobs so you need to learn to manage stress you need to practice stress management techniques like meditation exercise you can engage in some hobbies just to cope up with the job demands 
and the the mental or emotional pressure or stress you need to ensure job security awareness also you need to understand that the long term benefits including the pension plans and any other government job perks or maybe the financial stability of your job also because nowadays what government is doing they are just releasing uh, contractual jobs they are not uh, opening the permanent jobs and whatever job uh, opportunities are there they are just around the period of election so that they gather some kind of votes so they also look at doctors as a vote bank so you need to be cautious about that uh, you need to be vigilant what is the nature of your job and what is your backup plan you need to basically leverage any kind of opportunities for promotions or increments you need to take advantage of government sponsored training programs exams or any kind of certifications in order to advance your career so always seek some mentorship because this mentorship and that guidance it will help you need to connect with senior medical officers or some other mentors for advice it will help you to navigate any complexities in this kind of government job so you can stay connected with me through this channel please subscribe to this channel and i hope uh, i was able to guide you and tell you some of the uh, ideas that can help you if i have missed something please let me know in the comment section and also if you have some ideas please share those ideas so that others can learn from it and they can protect yours uh, their themselves so as a medical fraternity we need to help each other that is how we will be able to survive in this kind of bureaucratic and challenging environment so uh, that's all for my dear friends uh, please share this video with your government medical friends uh, those who are working as a doctor or maybe who are preparing for this kind of medical job in the government sector so that's all for now this is dr nitin signing out bye bye